It's your man Jay Graves, publisher of the JGravesReport.com. Y'all know I gotta go in on this whole Junior Seau situation. First of all, I want to start off by saying rest in peace to Junior Seau. But what I'm tripping on today, or yesterday, if you will, when the news broke that Junior Seau had committed suicide. Media outlets all over the country, everybody's Twitter account, Facebook account went nuts blaming the NFL with Junior Seau's death. Now let's keep it real. Like I always say, we're going to keep it real or all the way 100, whichever comes first. Come on, bro. The man hadn't been dead 24 hours. And everybody's an expert trying to put the blame or link the two, the NFL concussions to the man's suicide. We don't know what happened. We don't know what he was going through, what kind of situations he was dealing with, but it is completely unfair to link, to try to link the NFL to this man's suicide. Now, let's keep it real. I know that there is a link between head injuries, concussions, and what's going on now. But let's, let's look at it for what it is. First of all, Junior Seau played real football, a real football position for more than 20 years. He was a linebacker in the NFL for 20 years. Okay. Prior to that, this man played football for probably 10 or 11 years. So 32, 33, 34 years of his life, he was only 43 when he died. He played football. It is completely normal for a guy to go into depression after playing a sport his entire life. I'm not saying that the guy was depressed because of football or not playing football. What I am saying is it's completely plausible that he was that he could have gone into depression as a result of it. Let's, let's say this. If you dated a woman for 30 years and all of a sudden she didn't want you anymore, decided we're going to go for the young cat, that caused you to go into some depression to some degree. I'm just saying you can't just run out there and jump on the NFL and say it's the NFL's fault because this man committed suicide because other guys have committed suicide after playing. There are a lot of guys that have gone and been on drugs for years after playing or succumbed to alcoholism after playing, etc. You can't blame the NFL on that. So it's, it's, it's ridiculous or asinine, if you will, to try to blame the NFL for head injuries for this guy and no one has even taken his brain out to examine whether he had con concussion syndrome. You know, I remember when Dave Durson died uh, earlier this year or last year, when they examined his brain, he did have concussion syndrome and he had been saying he'd been suffering from that and he ended up killing himself and, and left a note for people to examine his brain. But I think it's also unfair when you examine the brain to say that he caught, he, his death was caused as a result of football because he had concussion syndrome. Let's keep it real or all the way 100. They don't examine everybody's brain when they die. The only time a brain gets examined, unless in an autopsy, is if, it, if there's been a request for it. Now, I just believe that, first of all, they weren't even testing for concussions 10 plus years ago. So anybody that's 35 or older that played the game of football at any level, high school, college, or pro, if you examine their brain, there's a very good chance that 90% of the guys that played the, played the game over a period of time is going to have some evidence of concussion syndrome, regardless of whether they committed suicide or not. 
you know, because let's keep it real. When I was playing football in high school and the short period of time I played in college, I have probably suffered 10 concussions. And the reason I say that is when you look back, they weren't, they weren't diagnosing concussions. When we were playing as kids, they called it getting your bell rung. Concussion symptoms are if a person has nausea, dizziness, seeing lights, don't know where they are. How many times has that happened during the course of your playing career? That ain't even happened when I was playing Pop Warner football. So over a period of time, guys have suffered concussions, and all they did, bruh, was put the smelling salt or the ammonia in your face, woke you up, and sent you back out on the field. So it is completely ridiculous that all these guys now that are 45, 50 years old played doing, and I'm 45, played the same time that I played high school or college or whatever, or even these guys that went to the pros, dude, they weren't even diagnosing concussions at the time. So how can you go out and try to sue the NFL when they weren't diagnosing concussions at the time? That's almost, that's as silly as someone trying to sue the automobile industry because a loved one died in a car accident in 1970 for not wearing a seatbelt. Come on, bro. I mean, and if they would have been diagnosing concussions in 1985 or 1990 or wherever, and they'd have told you, hey, bro, You've had three or four concussions. So we don't recommend that you play. How many guys, let's keep it real or all the way 100, would have turned in their uniforms? Would have turned in the equipment and said, I'm not playing anymore. So if you wouldn't have done that and you know you wouldn't have done it, then how are you out trying to get a lawsuit and get some money? Come on, dude. Come on, help me out here. You know, and you know, and, and so I just think it, it, it's it's completely irresponsible for people right now to try to associate the NFL with Junior Seau's death, and you have no evidence of that right now. I wrote a hot joint on it today. It's called the Telephone Game. I wrote another joint on that. It's called Hindsight is Twenty Twenty. You can't go back and try to sue the NFL for something that happened. Years before they start diagnosing concussions. I'll let you boy. It's your man Jay Graves. You can check me out on the blog at the jgravesreport.com or you can hit me up on Twitter at jgravesreport. Holler at your boy.